Hi, I'm Rob Meyer and I'm with Firebolt. You may have noticed customer benchmarks where Firebolt was 10 times faster across queries or up to 10 times lower costs like this one here uh, where Firebolt's being compared to Redshift. I'm a pretty healthy skeptic by nature. So if someone shows me numbers like these, I usually ask, how did you do that? And it's a great question. I'm not the only healthy skeptic out there. We get this question a lot. And we also think a lot about how to improve performance. So we decided to put together the top 10 ways you can improve performance and then explain how Firebolt does it and why it's faster. The first way we thought we'd explain is the easiest. It's separate your workloads. Data warehouses used to be big, single honking deployments with all your data and all your compute in a single specialized cluster. But data warehouse compute is actually different. It's usually a subsets of users clustered around smaller sets of queries and much smaller subsets of data. Uh, and there's several of them running across your big cluster. Decoupled storage and compute changed the game about a decade ago. It allowed you to make your compute look like your actual usage. You could actually bring up a new cluster, assign a subset of users and queries to it, and just run that. With a good decoupled storage and compute cloud data warehouse, this can be pretty simple. If you do this, you'll end up with several clusters. It's true, but they will be much faster because you're scanning much less data, much smaller because you can choose smaller clusters, hopefully lower costs, depending on how your vendor charges you, what they let you choose, and how you can start and stop your engines as you need them. And much faster for each user because there aren't as many users on each cluster. So they're not competing for as much for shared resources. Firebolt's much faster in production compared to a, a data warehouse like Redshift, which was the benchmark at the beginning, if you're dealing with multiple workloads and you can separate the workloads out like this. But why is Firebolt better versus uh, a cloud data warehouse like a Snowflake or BigQuery? Well, it's in part because we're the only modern cloud data warehouse that lets you create a cluster what we call an engine of any size and any number of nodes. And rather than talk about it, let me just show you here right now. This is a Looker application. That's actually a production application that a customer uses. They have a little over a thousand Looker users across the company using this against about 20 terabytes of data. Now I'm gonna clear the cache to show you the speed here there's no data locally, and then run it. And as you can see, the six queries that are in here are coming back really fast. If I change the filters to make sure you see this is live and run this, that's a good three times the data. It's three weeks worth roughly versus a week worth. It comes back pretty quickly. How is this working? Well, I'll show you that by looking out. I'll, I'll explain it all by using this big table down here, this detailed table, and using the query behind it. And then we'll walk through a couple different engines to show you how you can get the best performance and price performance. So this is actually the database we were running. It's a $4 an hour cluster. It's roughly this, the kind of engine that they're running in production. Um, but I've started up a smaller one as well. That's a little less than half the cost and we'll play around with that. In general, I can actually start up just about any engine I so choose. So as I'm going through this process of getting the best or good enough performance at the best price, I can choose for any given workload, the best optimized compute type of node from two up to 96 VPC, uh, vCPUs, something optimized for storage, for memory, or even a balanced kind of node that has the best of all of them for a mixed workload that might give me a better price performance when I have multiple workloads running on the same thing. So I can choose the smallest and keep growing it up to any size. I can go up to 128 nodes, or I could choose 
the biggest one I could possibly find and take it down to one. The choice is mine. So in this case, if I start running, choosing each different node and running the script, this is actually, this is the, uh, the query here. And if I look at the tables down here, I'll show the tables. Sorry, I'll run this script, which is showing the tables. You'll see that I've got about 32 billion rows and almost 20 terabytes of data here, which is compressed down to one terabyte, which is really good compression. So if I go to the table app query, I'm getting about 0.2 seconds for this range. If I increase it, just to make sure I'm testing some of the longer queries, 0.26. So let's run that with the lighter engine that's about a buck 80 an hour. Here it runs 0.3 seconds. In other words, for uh, something that's less than 50% uh, slower, so 0.23 versus 0.3, I'm still getting plenty of performance, but I can cut my costs in half. And this is how we help people choose the best price performance for each workload that they have in their cluster. But wait, Redshift, Snowflake, and BigQuery are roughly the same in benchmarks, right? If you look at the Fivetran benchmark that's here, the queries take eight to 11 seconds the first time you run the query after clearing the cache. So it means the difference isn't about decoupled storage compute, right? That's kind of right. Decoupled storage and compute helps improve performance and scalability for multiple workloads on the same data warehouse but not really for a single query or single workload. So decoupled storage compute isn't in general the main reason Firebolt's faster than Redshift in that benchmark we were looking at at the beginning. It's something else. We're gonna cover why, what that something else is and the rest of the 10 ways to improve data warehouse performance, starting with how to shrink the amount of data access for each query.